Hey guys, good morning. And I thought we'd do a little story time this morning in my garden under the frangipani tree because uh, it's a lovely sunny day. And this video is the one I spoke about in the last one about what happens when you're put in a position with life and you have to sell all your camera gears. Yeah, everything. I had to get rid of my expensive cameras, my digital cameras. I was literally left with the basic, basic cheapest of the cheap, square one, 135mm camera. That was it. And what that meant for me uh, mentally, creative, uh, creatively, um, and even technically being left with just, you know, one camera um, and one lens. Uh, but, you know, we'll talk about that later. But I thought it was an important lesson and I wanted to make this video because I still think people are out there chasing the the hyped cameras and the best of the best cameras. You know, everyone's still on the Leica train when I think it's just ridiculous these days how much they're going for. Um, the medium format cameras, the ones, you know, the big names are still very, very expensive. But the cost of film is gone up significantly. So not only are the cost of the cameras incredibly higher, but the cost of shooting is higher than it's ever been um, and it just put a lot of things in perspective for me um, you know when you're forced into a position where you have to get rid of everything and you have to go back to square one and what does that mean um, but it taught me a very valuable lesson and it was a really good really good creative um, I suppose you could call it a creative isolation almost you know being being stuck with nothing the bare bones the bare minimum um, and it taught me a really valuable lesson and it definitely improved my work um, and how I see things um, going forward, which is why I still don't have any expensive cameras, even though I finally got myself a, another digital camera and a big old spider crawling on my leg. Um, I have you know, finally got a digital camera again so I could make these YouTube videos, um, but I'm still with as far as film goes, I'm left with the basic of the basic. So I wanted to dive into that today, what happened, why it happened, because some people were curious and what it's taught me and hopefully a lesson I can pass on to some of you. So guys, you can tell, you know, I've moved to my beautiful rose garden because I have a, you know, an amazing new house in a great spot now. I have a beautiful rose garden. So we bought a new house, we sold our house and now we, we bought our, we're looking to buy our new house, we sold our house and we're applying for our mortgage um, and through a mortgage broker, you know, we thought everything was okay. Long story short, because my wife was still on maternity, we couldn't get a mortgage. So we couldn't get a mortgage to buy a new house, even though you know, we had sold or uh, listed and were selling our new house. So we essentially had to rent for six months. Um, we had to rent because we couldn't actually get, even though we had you know, plenty of money from selling our house for you know the deposit for the next house we couldn't couldn't get a, approved with the bank especially with the way the global financial markets are it was you know pretty stressful time for us sort of essentially kind of being being the thought of being homeless we weren't sure what we're we going to do and so on um, and long story short six months we finally get approved for the next mortgage to buy this beautiful house we're in now but there was one caveat the bank said okay that's fine yeah we'll, we'll approve you and give you the new mortgage loan but you have to pay out the remaining finance on your wife's car. And this is a lot of money, thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. I'm not gonna go specifically, but more than, over, well over $10,000. So with what savings we had, and we couldn't you dip into our money from the deposit of the, for the new house because we needed every penny. But essentially I had to sell all my cameras and then use my savings to, to pay this off so that we could get this uh, you know, mortgage approved for the new house and me and my family could have our own house again. So I had to get rid of everything. I had no choice. I wasn't left with any other option except I had to sell, you know, all the money I had, which was a lot tied up into my film gear and digital gear. I had to sell it all and go back to square one. Um, and I, I finally acquired what I would consider my GOAT 35mm camera. I finally acquired, um, and it was very, very expensive because you know what the price is like these days, but it was an M6 TTL 0.85 magnification um find it in that and just everything i loved about the m7 with everything you love about an m6 combined i love to shoot 50 millimeter so having that uh improved well increased magnification like it's smack bang between you know your 0.7 and your 0.9 on the m m3 and the 0.7 to the most uh standard 
like a uh, rangefinders have. It was just amazing. Like I love that thing to bits, and I shot it so much. But I was put in a position where I, I had to get rid of it. I had no choice but to sell my goat film camera, and all I was left with, and I had to sell the digital cameras as well. And all I was left with was this, my Nikon F100. Now this thing is an absolute beast. But but to go from having so much to one camera with one lens, a 50 mil. That's it. To go from having, you know, M glass, digital, zoom, everything, and being left with one 35 mil body and one lens. It was a bit of an eye opener. This I literally couldn't shoot anything else. Um, you know, I'm still lucky in that, in a sense that my my water housing isn't worth that much money, so it wasn't worth selling. And essentially, the F100 isn't worth that much money. It's a pretty cheap camera. The the Nikon 50 1.8G is a hundred dollar lens second hand. It's not honestly worth selling so I just kept the one camera and this is all I'm shooting I had no other option creatively except one camera with a 50 mil lens now granted the f100 does do pretty much anything that you could want a 35 mil film camera to do this camera does it there's nothing this thing can't do you know auto advance five frames a second uh psam everything uh you know multiple exposure <laughs> does everything but again it's it's a tool this is a camera i consider a tool for for surf photography it's not not uh, a camera like you i gravitate to as like a really enjoyable shooting experience it's just the best tool for what i need to do and that's sort of when i realized i was very very upset like i was really really pissed off that i had to sell everything but my family comes first and life happens sometimes things just happen in life and you know you have to forego your own pleasure for the sake of other people, for the sake of my family. And I was just left with this. And, you know, me and my wife went on a trip up to Broome as well for her birthday, um, which is like 17 hours driving north of, of Perth. Um, and I just had one camera to document and took some great photos and still been shooting all my surf photography stuff with just this and, and having a ball. And I just stopped caring. I just was like, well, this is all I've got. I can't get anything else. I can't afford anything. This is it. So I'm left with this. And I better make the best of a bad situation. And creatively, it has freed me up like you wouldn't imagine. There's no need for anything else. Like this camera is all I need to, to do the work that I like to, to do. I mean, additionally, all I would love to grab is a big zoom lens for this. And then that's it. And then I'm happy as a pig in, you know what? Um, and it just made me realize that all the years of chasing the M6s and the Mamiya's and the Hasselblads and the Contaxes, and it was all for what? The amount of money I could have saved if I had just gone basic of the basic and put more effort into being creative than scrolling through Facebook ads and scrolling through YouTube videos, watching camera reviews, and oh, I'm gonna get that, I'm gonna try that, I'm gonna blow money on that. And I think it's more important now than ever because the cost of everything is insane the cost of these cameras it just blows my mind that people are, are paying for it but on the other hand some people have realized i have never seen in the last three to three months i've never seen so much high-end film gear for sale uh than ever before because i think everyone's finally clued on that you know what it's just too expensive to have that amount of money invested in a camera that does exactly the same thing well, there's the depth of field it does exactly the same thing as the cheaper cameras do it just doesn't make sense and then with lenses and lens quality that's almost you could say yeah well the lens quality but again when you're shooting 35 mil film the difference between a really really good like an amazing lens and a good lens you can't really see the difference honestly i mean vignetting is one thing you see the difference on and wide apertures but you don't really see that much of a difference because the grain covers up a lot of that extra detail and extra sharpness if you're shooting digital then it's a completely different ball game because a crap lens on a digital camera gives you soft images and so on but on film the grain tends to cover up those imperfections of the lens so it really doesn't matter anymore so guys i hope hearing this has you know maybe given you some some insight into you know potentially the need not to have the best the greatest the most expensive gear and that you know you can be happy with what you have it's taken me a long time but i have to say in the last nine months i've been i've been more content with what i'm shooting what i'm creating and what i'm making artistically than i have when i had 
you know, GF670s and Hasselblads and like M6s and like M10s. And I had all that expensive, really good gear. I'm more content now than I have ever have been. I did buy one other camera about a month ago as a daily driver because, you know, the F100, like I said, that's a workhorse. That goes in the housing, that shoots. So if that's a, a work camera, it's not enjoyable. I don't enjoy the, the experience really of shooting that camera. It just is the best tool for the job of capturing the type of work surf photography stuff that I like to shoot. But I did pick up again. Now, this is probably the third one of these I've had. I got myself another Nikon F3. Now, this is what I consider it's not the most expensive. Um, you know, they're still relatively cheap, but I think this is the sweet spot in, you know, for everyone. For, God, it's got something for everyone. It's got that street cred of being a Nikon F3. It's got the compa compatibility with some of the you know, amazing Nikon AIS lender and lenses and Voigtlander. We'll talk about that one later, Voigtlander lenses. Um, but it still does everything. It's got all the features you need. It's got exposure lock. It's got two thousandths of a second, you know, it does everything that you need a film camera to do, but it's still a beautiful camera to look at. Mechanically, it works fine. Film advances the shutter. It's, it's, it fits, I think, these days, considering how expensive everything is, it's almost one of the best options in that little niche of, of affordable, with good looks, good handling, and functionality. It sits right in there, and I'm going to make another video on it and revisit it from the one that I made probably about three or four years ago. Um, but other than that, I'm just so happy. I'm happy shooting black and white film, you know, bulk loaded, so I've always got lots of it. Um, I'm happy with the work that I'm making. I'm really happy creatively with what I've been making with a lot less cheaper, not as, some would say, not as good gear than what I had. Um, and it's freed me up creatively, and it's, like I said, I've been, I'm content. I, I don't think I've ever been content in all these years of, you know, shooting film and doing this and always wanting to try the next camera or buy the next camera but like i'm just content i'm happy with what i have and i don't need anything else to make what i want to make and be happy and it's all because i was forced into a position where i had to sell everything i had i had to get rid of everything and i couldn't keep the my goat cameras and my, my favorite cameras I had to get rid of them all now in saying that then i've just heard while i was taking a quick break before moving position to film this, that Leica apparently now have just, it's confirmed that the Leica M6 is coming back. There's an event in October in Germany and they're bringing it back. So that's gonna be really interesting. I'm not gonna be able to afford it, I'm not gonna be able to buy one because with the rising cost of living, fuel prices, cost of goods, inflation, mortgage uh, interest rates keep going up, everyone's disposable income is shrinking. So, you know, I won't be able to buy one, but it'll be interesting to see what happens there. Anyway, I'll see you in the next video, which will probably be about the F3. But I'll see you guys soon and enjoy the rest of your, week your weekend like I'm going to do on this beautiful day. I'll see you later.